Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining me today for this special presentation of key financial data for 2024. Today, we're going to cover tax rates, thresholds, limitations, exemptions, and more for this year. My name is Mark Bowdis. I'm the founder of Bowdis Financial. We're a financial advising company located in Montclair, New Jersey. Uh, so the big news for tax brackets and tax rates for 2024 um, there's actually seven, still seven tax brackets in 2024, and let's run through them uh, quickly. So here are the tax brackets for single filers in 2024. The lowest tax bracket you can see goes up to 11,600. And on the other side of it, single filers with a taxable income over $609,350 are in the top 37% tax rate. So you can see there's a big gap between the 243,000 in the 35% bracket and it jumping up to the to the 37 bracket um, when your income crosses over the 609,000. Here are the tax brackets and rates for those who file married filing jointly and surviving spouses in 2024. The lowest tax bracket you can see here goes up to 23,200. And then um, on the other side, filers with a taxable income over 731,000 $200 are in the top 37% tax rate. Here are the uh, tax brackets and tax rates for those who are filing as head of household. The lowest tax bracket you can see goes up to 16,550 and then filers with the taxable income over 609,350 are in the top 37% tax bracket. Here are the tax brackets and rates for those who are married filing separately. The lowest tax bracket um, goes up to $11,600, and then filers with a taxable income over $365,600 are in the top 37% tax bracket. For most married couples, it's usually more favorable to file jointly, but there are some circumstances where it may make sense to file uh, married separately. And this is something that we can cover if it makes sense specifically for you. And lastly, here are the rates for estates and trusts this year. Um, you can see here that the top 37% marginal tax rate, it kicks off for estates and trusts with ju that just have over $15,200 of income. So this one is the one with the biggest uh, change or the biggest difference between the other, um, the other uh, tax filing statuses. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about the standard deduction for this year. The standard deduction, which is shown here, it increases slightly from 27,700 in 2023 to 29,200 in 2024 for married filing jointly filers. Um, and then from um, 13,850 to 14,600 for single and married filing separately filers. And from uh, 20,800 to 21,900 for head of household filers. So remember that the ability to take per the personal exemption has been eliminated. Um, this change, which to some degree, it tempers the benefit of the higher standard deduction. And there is an additional standard deduction amounts. Um, these went up slightly from 2023. Thus, people who are blind or over age 65 receive an, an extra deduction of 1,550 each in 2024, which is up from 1,500 in 2023. And the additional deduction also increases from 1,850 in 2023 to 1,950 in 2024 for taxpayers who are blind or over 65, as well as unmarried and not a surviving spouse. Uh, for 2024, the child tax credit, it's $2,000 per child, um, of which 1,700 of that is refundable um, for those with income under 400,000 who are filing jointly and 200,000 for all others. Okay, so now let's go over the rates on capital gains. The tax rates on long-term capital gains and qualified dividends are generally unchanged at 0%, 15%, and 20%, but the brackets for the rates will change. So for 2024, the 15% rate applies to capital gains or dividends that push taxable income above 94,000 $50 for joint returns and surviving spouses, and $63,000 for heads of households, and $47,025 for single and married filing separately taxpayers, and then $3,000 for uh, estates and trusts. The 20% rate 
applies to long-term capital gains or qualified dividends that propel taxable income past $518,900 for joint filers and surviving spouses, $551,350 for heads of households, $518,900 for single filers, uh, $291,850 for married filing separately, and $15,650 for estates and trusts. So uh, remember that exceptions uh, also apply for art collectibles and section 1250 gains, um, which are related to depreciation. All right, so now we'll cover some additional taxes that may be relevant for you. The alternative minimum tax has been adjusted for inflation and will continue to affect fewer and fewer taxpayers under the uh, Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. In 2024, this exemption amounts, it rises to 133,300 for married filing jointly, which is up from 126,500 in 2023. Uh, it's at 85,700 for single filers, which is up from 81,300 in 2023, and 66,650 for filers who are married filing separately, which is up from 63,250 in 2023. And then the exemption amount for states and trusts rises to 29,900 from 28,400 in 2023. Some high income taxpayers. Uh, owe the net investment income tax, acronym NIIT, of 3.8%, which is levied on the lesser of net investment income or modified adjusted gross income, um, if it's over 200,000 for single filers or 250,000 if you are married filing jointly. So these are amounts remain unchanged from 2023. Um, and net in investment income includes taxable interest, ordinary dividends, capital gains, um, basically any other income categories and some expenses can be subtracted out of this. All right, so what about gifting rates and the estate tax for this year? So estate gift and the GST, which is a generation skipping tax exclusions, they rise from 12,920,000 in 2023 to 13,610,000 in 2024. The top uh, federal estate tax rate remains unchanged at 40%. And also the IRS has issued final regulations that there will be no clawback at sunset. Uh, the value of gifts one person can give another without reporting it on a gift tax return, it rises from 17,000 in 2023 to 18,000 in 2024. And then unlimited payments for tuition and medical expense expenses are permitted. All right, so let's talk about some of the education credits, deductions and distributions. Um, just as in the past years, in 2024, taxpayers with qualified education expenses can reduce their tax bill by up to 2,500, of which 1,000 is refundable. And this is thanks to the American Opportunity Tax Credit. If their modified adjusted gross income doesn't exceed 80,000, um, or if you're filing jointly, 160,000. Um, and then at that income level, the credit actually starts to phase out and you're not allowed to, uh, to take that tax credit. Um, this non-refundable credit, the life, uh, lifetime learning credit, it's worth up to $2,000. In 2024, the credit starts to phase out for taxpayers with modified adjusted gross income of 80,000 singly or filing singly and 160,000 if you are married filing jointly. Um, here it offers, th this type of credit offers two advantages over the American Opportunity Tax Credit, credit that we just um, looked at, in which the LLC or the Lifetime Learning Credit, it can be claimed for an unlimited number of tax years, where, uh, whereas the um, AOTC, it, it's limited to, to just four tax years per eligible student. Um, and the other benefit is the student doesn't need to be pursuing a degree. It, um, whereas the AOTC requires the student to be pursuing a degree or some other type of credential. Uh, parents and others who want to save for a student's education costs, they can contribute a maximum of 2000 to these accounts. So um, the contributions are after tax, like a Roth IRA. And then what you're allowed to do is you're allowed to withdraw the contributions and investment earnings tax-free if the funds are used to pay for qualified education expenses. Um, so the maximum contribution for these covered L education savings accounts stays the same in 2024 as it was in 2023 and it was, was in 2022. And it's it, there is, unlike a 529, 
um, there is income uh, limits for this. So it phases out for taxpayers that have a modified adjusted gross income of 95,000 or 190,000 if you're married filing jointly. As in 2023, the, the uh, law continues to allow up to $10,000 a year in 529 plan dis distributions to pay for qualified private school, kindergarten through 12th grade education uh, cost, which does exclude homeschooling. And um, you know, this is uh, because of the higher amounts, it's a provision that may encourage taxpayers to focus on 529 plans rather than covered else. Um, and previously for a 529 distribution to be qualified, it had to be used for higher education costs. Whereas now K through 12 expenses, um, they, they were considered a qualified education uh, cost for covered out plans. The law also allows rollovers from 529 plans to ABLE accounts for disabled beneficiaries until December 31st, 2025. But you wanna just make sure that you check with a specific state because some states are decoupling from uh, from the federal and not treating the 529 plan withdrawal from K through 12 expenses as a qualified dist distribution, as they also have specific rules in connection with the ABLE account rollovers. Uh, retirement plans continue to be in the news and are the subject of much debate and change. Um, so the total amount that employers and employees combined can contribute to a 401k or similar defined contribution plan, it rises to 69,000 in 2024, which is up from 66,000 in 2023. The limit on how much compensation can be counted under a qualified plan rose to 345,000 from 330,000 in 2023. Meanwhile, the basic annual benefit limit for divine benefit increases to 275,000. In 2024, taxpayers who save for retirement in a traditional IRA or Roth IRA, uh, they're limited to a $7,000 contribution plus a $1,000 catch up if you're 50 or older. However, there's no age um, limit on your ability to contribute to an IRA as long as you have earned income. And then taxpayers who aren't participating in, re in a retirement plan at work generally can deduct the full contribution to a traditional IRA. However, there are some income uh, threshold limits that where the deductibility of the contributions um, for taxpayers that are participating in a workplace plan, or even if their spouse participates, um, they're not able to, to contribute. And you see the rules on, on the, uh, the right side of this table here. All right, so now let's cover some major health-related uh, health numbers for 2024. So we'll discuss HSAs, long-term care premiums, and Medicare numbers for this year. So health savings accounts, um, which offer the tax rate or tax a rare tax trifecta. Contributions are made pre-tax. They enjoy the investments inside your HSA, in, uh, enjoy tax-free investment returns, and then money comes out of the HSA um, tax-free if you use it to pay for qualified medical expenses. The downside is that these accounts uh, generally or currently, they're only available if you are enrolled in a high deductible health plan, which can pose a steep upfront cost, or it can be different than what you're normally used to. In 2024, the minimum annual deductible um, amount for a qualifying health plan, it's 1,600 for an individual and 3,200 or 3,200 for family coverage. The maximal, maximum deductible contribution to an HSA in 2024 is 4,150 for individuals. Um, and then for family uh, coverage, the maximum deductible contribution is 8,050. And then similar to your IRAs, there's a $1,000 catch-up contribution available if you're age 55 or older. So taxpayers who are paying for long-term care, they generally can deduct a portion of their premiums as qualified medical expenses. Um, and then when I say long-term care, it's long-term care insurance. The deductible, it varies based on the taxpayer's age, and it's subject to the 10% floor for medical expenses. The standard premium amount in 2024 is, for Medicare is $174.70, um, although some Part B beneficiaries pay less due to this hold harmless provision that protects them if Social Security benefits rise slower than Medicare premiums do. 
Uh, the people who pay the higher figure includes those signing up for Medicare Part D for the first time, those who don't receive Social Security benefits, those who don't have their Part B benefits automatically deducted from their Social Security benefits, and there are a couple other of, of classes of people. Meanwhile, some high income uh, beneficiaries will pay more than the standard premium as shown here. Um, remember that Medicare premiums apply to income from two years prior. And the decision, so the decisions you make today with income and taking distributions and all that, it will have a future impact on what you'll what you'll pay in, in Medicare. All right, so there are some key social security figures pre-retirees and retirees should be aware of. The social security estimated maximum monthly benefit in, um, in it's 3,822 in 2024. And this is up slightly from 3,627 in 2023. The maximum taxable wage base in 2024 is 168,600, which is up from 2023's 160,200. And then the tax rate remains the same at 6.2 each for the employer and employee. So it's a total of 12.4% if you're self-employed. And the so-called full or normal retirement age for claiming unreduced social security benefits, it's 66 for people who were born in 1943 through 1954. For those who were born after 1954, but before 1960, the full retirement age is 66 plus some number of months, depending on the birth year. And then if you're born 1960 or later, the full retirement age is 67. So sometimes retirees are surprised to find out that their social security benefits are taxed. This sl slide shows the income thresholds at which benefits start to be taxed. So to figure in your, your tax bill, you must compute your provisional income, which is also known as your combined income, and your combined income equals income plus non-taxable interest plus half of your social security benefit. All right, so our tax code, it's, it's evolved from a two-page form in 1913 to over 75,000 pages of complex rules that are constantly changing. So we covered a lot today and it really boils down to a two-page card that we offer that has all these numbers that we discussed. And we offer it as a reference card and you can keep track of these. And I refer to a lot on my side, a lot of people that um, access this or utilize this comment that they use this a lot just to quickly reference a number if they have to, and it's very easily accessible. Um, so you, we do offer that where you can, you can pull that card from our website. Uh, we also have a learning center where you can see some of our past webinar replays. And we've also recorded uh, recently um, some videos on planning opportunities based off of these key financial data, or these different tax brackets or deduction amounts that we uh, cover today. And you can see the Learning Center by going to bowdisfinancial.com backslash Learning Center. <clears throat> um, so the, also the presentation may have brought up some questions on your tax situation that you'd like some more clarity on. Um, if so, let's schedule some time to meet. We can discuss planning strategies for your particular situation. And while we're not CPAs, we don't prepare tax returns. Um, we have the ability to incorporate tax strategy into your overall planning, evaluate a tax return, um, you know, discuss how it fits into or what kind of planning opportunities you may be able to take advantage of, whether that's deductions, credits, um, you know, something like a Roth conversion. And we'd be happy to uh, to discuss those with you. And you can set up that free consultation at boutisfinancial.com backslash call. And thank you everyone for, for tuning in today.